Good morning. How are you all doing? Just fine? Good? Great? How do you want to do it? You all want to be great? How many of you want to be great? Raise your hands. Good. I think except those sitting in the front row, everybody else has raised their hand. It's, it's good. So maybe they are already great. I have chosen myself a topic, designing destiny, need for individual change. Prior to that, I just want to share that each one of your life is like a movie that is unfolding. Many of you might be just the actors in this movie, living the script of someone else who has written what you should do, where you should go, how you should grow, what you should become, etc., etc. This is like a typical movie where many of these stars act. But the real story writer, the script writer is someone else. And they all just mouth the lines that are given by the script writers and do the roles according to what the directors say. The movie becomes a hit or a failure Actually, the challenge is with the person who has uh, written the story and the script, not with the people who have acted. In that sense, you all, those who are assembled here today, have a choice to make whether you want to live your life like a movie where someone else is scripting what happens to you. Or, would you like to write your own script and decide how the rest of the life that you want to live should be? All of you are interested in rewriting scripts and taking control from now on. Just show me a raise of hand so that I know that at least you have the basic intent. How many of you want to rewrite your future, taking control of your script from now? Good, almost 70%. That's interesting. I'm sure by the end, the rest 30% will also join in and say that uh, this is something that you would like to do too. As we progress, I have split uh, this uh, talk into about four sections in total. The last section will have certain action points in terms of what you can do when you go back. And uh, like how normally stories unfold, you will have a prelude and then certain uh, explanations given as to what this topic is about so that you understand that you don't need to be a uh, actor in this movie called life but you can take control of your life going forward what has happened till now at this moment is already history as far as your life is concerned during this phase being students that you are if there are any interesting inputs that you find, I would uh, suggest or request that you make a note of it. I'm sure that all of you would be carrying a notepad and not be able to completely see from here. Else, at least if you have a mobile, put it in silent mode, open your notes, whatever uh, notes app that you have. Take a few points because it's bound to help a lot when you go back and uh, think over what happened in this uh, 45 minutes to an hour. If you look at the word uh, designing destiny, there are uh, two parts to the word destiny by itself and the word uh, designing. If you look at the language English, all these words typically have the original uh, language of English apparently had less than 800 to 1000 words. 
the rest of the world uh, today spoken english as it is known has anywhere between 5 to 7 lakh words is what they say what they did is to borrow from all the other languages whether it's latin greek french whatever and enrich their own language hence every word that anyone uses has something called as the root of the word or also called as uh, etymology we look at uh, these two words to find what it actually originally means how we understand it currently and uh, what we can do about it if you look at the word uh, destiny per se it uh, has multiple origins it comes from originally a latin word called destinata it is also the past participle of the word make firm or establish if you look at uh, the explanation of this word it goes something like this it can be called as the fate it can be called as the overruling necessity or the irresistible tendency of certain events that are to come about or a force that shapes and controls lives and events in some way something which is predetermined and sure to come true if you look at the word uh, design from where we take the word designing it comes from a word which means a scheme or plan in the mind to make shape mark out point out devise or choose actually speaking if you really look at it uh, part of the answer that i want to share is already hidden in the definition of these words and apparently Uh, the word designing destiny also might sound to english students here like an oxymoron how can i design something which is already pre made how can i change is it possible so let us ask ourselves a fundamental question do we believe in destiny how many of you believe in the word destiny or fate let me see a raise of hands people are playing it safe i guess only so about 20% people raise their hands it also shows the confidence levels of the students it's good why do we believe in destiny why do we believe in something called as a fate why do we accept what comes to us as something which we don't have a choice if you look at the human uh, psychology in the basic uh, framework of the human mind we tend to accept what is convenient what is easy when something does not happen as per our wish it's quite easy for us to say it was destined to happen i was destined to get low marks i was destined not to be accepted by the society i am destined not to have friends i am destined not to be a great student i am destined not to be the best student in my college i don't have good friends i don't have a good job i am destined it's quite convenient because you don't need to do anything about it you can blame everyone else around you and say that this is my destiny it's already written as a fate and i have to go through the second if you really look at is as a way of escapism because the human nature by itself is we do not want to be seen as failures we all like to be seen as successful people and when success is measured in terms of uh, ranks and marks and the jobs that you hold the salaries that you get the cars that you drive the homes that you possess and finally if you don't happen to get them either in a long uh, time frame or in a short time frame when people ask questions about uh, you are a brilliant student what happened you are not doing well in your uh, job you didn't get a job maybe your job is not well paid the easiest thing is for us to escape play the card of escapism to say that uh, it's all preordained it's all predestined
The other factor is we also tend to bring in our parents and the society into this equation. Right from my childhood, I was not treated well. My parents did not support me. They did not pay where I wanted to. I wanted to study in so-and-so university, but they couldn't afford, so I went and studied elsewhere. We find excuses because the society has taught us from the beginning, from our childhood days, that it is all right to blame others and uh, say that so-and-so is in charge or so-and-so is what did to me, which has happened and it has unfolded where today I am looking at my life where I am facing what I am facing. Beyond all this, we need to accept one thing very clearly. As I said in the beginning, when you want to set out to write a script on your own, if you look at any of the movie grades uh, today, all of them went through a path of taking ownership of their lives. They were ready to give up their comfort zones and come out and face the real life as they call it. Meet failure after failure. I wouldn't normally call anything as a failure. I always call failures as uh, experiences. Till you meet success, you have learned one more. As Thomas Alva Edison would say, I have learned one more way of not inventing the light bulb. It has given me an experience as to how I don't, where I don't need to go. If you are ready to take ownership for your life, starting from now, whatever I would talk from now on would make a lot of uh, sense to you. It's quite easy to instill such belief systems in young minds because you are still in the process of shaping your thinking pattern and your belief systems. It is still possible for us to instill certain thinking patterns and belief systems so that you start taking ownership of your lives and go back and say, from now, my life and my destiny is something that is purely in my hands. All along somebody else has written a script as to how I should live. Maybe partly I also wrote a few lines here and there, but from now on, I will ensure that I will be the only person who write the script and I will be the hero or the heroine of my movie and I will decide what are uh, the successes that I will follow. If I face challenges, how I will overcome. When the climax in the movie, typically you will find that the good wins over the bad. You will also learn that finally, good things can happen to each and every one of you consistently. Whatever happens in between, take it as an experience. Don't think that they are failures. Let's now look at uh, what are the building blocks of uh, destiny. Being homo sapiens that we are, we are all gifted with one of the biggest advantage which the other species in the world, as of now they say it's about three and a half lakh species are there around us on the earth alone, other than what is in the sea. All these do not have one faculty that we have. All of you are bestowed with it. It's available free of cost. It is called as your ability to think and discriminate. Your ability to think and discriminate is something nobody can take away from you, though it can be influenced. Even my thoughts, my inputs today might influence you, but it is up to you to think and discriminate which is that which you want to follow, which is that you don't want to follow. We all have this ability to think, is what I said. Do we use this ability to think in our day-to-day -day lives? What is this investment that God has given to us free of cost? How do we ensure that we use this effectively in shaping the destiny going forward? If you look at thought as an investment, let's compare it with a bank account. Every day you go to a bank counter and you have a choice of making 80,000 transactions. At least the former students here might be able to connect with this better. You have a choice of making about 80,000 transactions every day, walking to the bank, going to the counter. And when you go to a counter, there are three things that normally you can do. 
he can either deposit money or he can withdraw money or he can come back without doing anything. If you are smart, let us assume that you have enough wealth for the rest of your life to manage, let's assume, which all of us have, though we don't realize. If I go to the bank counter, I don't have a necessity to withdraw funds because I have all the funds that I need to run my life. What would make prudent sense to you when you walk to the banking counter? Would I deposit? Would I withdraw? Or would I come back without doing a transaction? All those who believe that if I am well off, when I go to a bank counter, I need to deposit, I don't need to withdraw. Please raise your hands so that I understand that you follow the example. How many of you? I think about 20 raise their hands. I gave their all former students. I have to put money into my account. Or I can withdraw money into my account. When I withdraw money from my account, what happens? My bank account depletes, balance-wise. When I do nothing, the bank account stays. Similarly, God has invested in each and every one of you from the time you wake up in the morning till you go to sleep in the night. You have about 80,000 thoughts, roughly, plus or minus. which you can use. Each thought, please remember, is like a seed. Each thought is like a seed and each of this seed, there is a tree which is hiding inside it. If I am able to plant it well, if I am able to put it in the right soil, if I am able to let it germinate by watering it properly and taking, it, uh, taking adequate care of it, that tree would unfold at some point of time and grow into a banyan or whatever it is supposed to be. The same way, the same thought can be used by you for you to create weeds. Weeds are unwanted growth in a garden. If you have a choice of growing a rose or a weed in your garden, what is the option would be coming to all of us automatically. We would prefer to plant roses. Am I right? We don't want to see weeds in our garden. Likewise, from the time you wake up till you go to sleep, say you have about 80,000 thoughts. Each thought has a potential to create your future. Each thought brought together in a consistent, focused fashion over a prolonged period of time becomes over a period of time, your real belief system. If I am consistently developing a thought about success, whatever I might want to call it to be, over a period of time, it becomes my belief system where these thoughts go and actually program your subconscious mind. Each and every one of you, the way you have the facility or the faculty to think, all of us are also born with the conscious and the subconscious mind as part of us. This subconscious mind is what is continuously processing what you are thinking and it is forming your life script which is inside. When these life scripts are formed over a period of time, like many of you would have seen in the Aladdin and the 40 Thieves movie, it's like a genie which comes out in your hand. You brush it, the ghost comes out or the genie comes out, you ask what you want, it will get you what you exactly want. The genie does not know what is possible and what is impossible. It will exactly get you what you want. You want to fail, it will get you failure. If you want success, it will get you success. You want a car, it will get you a car. Don't ask me whether you will get it tomorrow, might not. Maybe it will take some time because there are certain things that we need to do. If such a power exists where my subconscious mind has every possible future that is unfolding already written into it. What is bound to happen is whatever are your predominant thoughts during the day tend to become your belief system. You start firmly believing to a great extent when we are young. These thoughts are influenced by our parents and our society and to some extent our teachers. As we grow up, 
once we understand our ability to discriminate that I can accept this input. It's like something coming to you, I can filter it, I can say that I don't need this. Once you start discriminating, when you start getting thoughts which actually belittle you or make you think about failures, make you think about wrong options, it's up to you. It's up to you to decide what discerns your central nervous system. They say that once you allow it to go into the brain, it descends into your central nervous system, goes through your spine, it gets formed, it forms the core of your DNA and then later it finds a way to unfold itself like every seed. Recently I was reading an article, they found one seed in Egypt from the pyramid and they thought this seed would be dead. They took the seed, they put it in a soil, they watered it and they found it started growing. That is the power of a seed and our thoughts are much more powerful than that, that every thought, however dormant, however deeply hidden they are, they are inside of you waiting to unfold. The way in which this seed unfolded when it found soil, till then it was hiding in a pyramid, till someone found it. Likewise our thoughts find a way to unfold itself in real life when a situation demands. That's why I say that people who use their thinking powers are pretty lucky. I define the word luck as a well-formed mind meeting opportunities. It's as simple as that. A well-formed mind meeting opportunities. When I go through this process of allowing my thinking process to be programmed by others, at least from today, just think about this. Every day in the morning when you get up, God or the Creator or Nature or you, you yourself have given yourself about 80,000 thoughts for you to play around with. These thoughts, for example, can be either positive, can be negative or can be neutral. For example, you are all watching me, I am watching you. You find a backdrop, there is a mic here, there is a podium here, there is somebody standing here and taking a photograph, somebody standing there and recording the conversation. There are a few people looking here and there. When you watch and do nothing about it, these are all called neutral thoughts. It is said in behavioral science that in a day, out of these 80,000 80, thoughts, about 50% approximately, about 40,000 of these thoughts are neutral thoughts, which are, they do nothing, you just observe it goes. It's like going to a bank and doing nothing, instead of depositing money, I do nothing, go to the teller counter, come back without doing anything about it. The rest of the 40,000 thoughts, the behavioral scientists have found out, surprisingly, out of this, 39,500 thoughts are considered to be negative thoughts. Negative thoughts put in very simple terms are people keep telling you or you tell yourself, I can't do it, I am not capable, I don't have it in me, I am not born to do this, great things are not meant for me. That's why I asked you in the beginning, would you like to feel great at the end of the session? Because finally greatness is embodied in you already, it is for you to allow it to unfold. The other 500 thoughts out of the 80,000 thoughts are considered to be the real positive thoughts. The positive thoughts are very simply put your hope and belief system, your self-belief system that I am born to make a difference in this world. I am born to achieve great things in life. I am born to do great things in life. These are the things which Again, it forms as a thought if you allow it. And these 500 thoughts that you have been using every day, vis a vis the 79,500 thoughts which you have not been using, actually they are the ones who are creating whatever you have brought into. It is said that uh, very rarely humans cross 1% of their true potential in their lives. When they look at uh, human psychology, they all say, you know, one of the best things is to look at working towards self-actualization. Self-actualization is when I am 
actually capable at a self level of this and I've actually actualized. When I give 100 rupees in a bank counter and ask for change, they must give me change which adds back to 100. Either a 10 rupee denomination, 10 notes, or 5 rupee denomination, 20 notes, or whatever. If I give 100 and if they give me just 1 rupee, is it a fair deal? Likewise, the greatness that is uh, hidden in each and every one of you is something that is waiting to unfold and no one else has the key to this except yourself. The one person playing field that you are currently playing has brought you to where you are today. Even in this one person, 95% unfortunately, 99.5% unfortunately is consumed by neutral thoughts and negative thoughts. Imagine with 0.5% of the thoughts, which is just 1% of my total investment, if my life unfolds into what it has become today, what am I really capable if I allow the rest to unfold? These 500 thoughts, some of you may be wondering, how can these 500 positive thoughts make me what I am today if the 39,500 thoughts are so powerful, you should have finished me off. I'll just give you a small example. When you walk into a room which is completely dark, you don't need to light the nook and corner of the room for you to make the room filled with light. All you have to do is light a small matchstick. It automatically illuminates and fills up the entire room with whatever level of luminance that is different. That is the darkness is gone. This is the power of positive thinking. These find the thoughts that you have that is to a great extent, maybe if you have 100 friends or uh, teachers or family people that you are known to, about one or two of them will keep patting you on the back, supporting you, saying you are great, you are good, you will do good, don't worry. These are all small challenges that you face. These are the people who keep feeding your positive uh, inputs, positive thoughts and allow it to unfold where it actually has brought you to where you are today. Starting from now, if you are able to use the rest of the 79,500 thoughts starting from today, all you have to do is do a traffic diversion. Change it from either neutral or negative thinking to positive thinking. There are certain choices that we have in front of us. I will share as to how this can be done. How do these thoughts unfold or how should they really unfold? Let's have a look at it. Normally, if you walk into the main road and ask someone standing there, where does this road go? The first question that the person who is standing there will ask you is, where do you want to go? You can easily ask him, how does it matter to you? Please tell me where the road goes. Because you keep going in the road, you go anywhere you want. It can take you to the end of the world also. Even for such a simple thing as traveling by road, people want to know where they want to go. But unfortunately, we, many of us, do not have very clear goals in our life as to where we want to go, what we want to do. They did a survey in corporate circles a few years back and the published research shows that about 98% of the corporate uh, executives who work across the globe, who have been surveyed, do not have goals for their future, nor a written plan as to how to meet those goals. So we are not alone. The rest 2%, it is said, are the people who literally run the world today. They have very clear goals as to where they want to go. They have very clear plans and they have very clear execution methodologies through they ensure that these plans actually unfold. So, if you are looking at how to use even these 500 positive thoughts that you have before looking at how to convert those 79,500 thoughts into positive thoughts, these positive thoughts that you have, it all starts with a choice. Everywhere in the world is based on a choice. When you go to Central Station, you take a train, it goes right up to maybe Basin Bridge uh, Junction. At Basin Bridge Junction, the locomotive driver has a choice of picking one specific direction. Of course, he is partly remotely controlled. When he takes the direction over the next course of four hours, 20 hours, 40 hours or whatever, either he lands up in Kanyakumari or he lands up in Bangalore or he lands up in Hyderabad or he goes to Jammu and Kashmir or to Assam or to Bombay, whatever. All it needed at that moment was a choice which became the life-altering course for that person. For him to come back to that course and to go elsewhere would take a lot of time. Choice is the biggest asset that we all have 
as homo sapiens. Every moment of our life, we are given hundreds and hundreds of choices. It is up to you to choose wisely. One, you need to choose. If you don't choose, what happens is somebody else will choose for you. Like the movie script, either you choose or somebody else will choose. If I want to choose, the first choice I would make starting from now is to go back and write what do I want to do out of my life. I want to make a choice right now, here and there, in this room. You are right now, let us assume, in Basin Bridge Junction. In this Basin Bridge Junction, you have a choice which side you want to go. Right now, if you are really serious about it, either think, take a sheet of paper or write down, where do I want to go one year from now, three years from now, five years from now, when I retire at the end of 40 years, what should I be? How I should have lived my life? Because man has the huge ability to live his life twice. We are the only ones who have the ability to live our twice. First we can, we can, not we don't, not necessarily we don't, but we can. First choose how to live our life here. Every thought I make, I decide how to lead my life. Either the choice is made by myself or made by somebody else. If I make this choice, if I write down today, at this moment, I am in Basin Bridge Junction, I have a choice to make having attended on this date, this session on deciding destiny, that this will be my life. Don't worry about who will buy your uh, movie after it is made. If the movie is good, producers will stand in queue. Movie industry for the last 80 years has hundreds of success stories where initially the script was rebuffed as they say by people and finally when the movie was made, people stood in queues to buy the movie. All hits movies are like that. Likewise, your story, your life, if it has to become a hit, as a script writer, you need to believe that this script is worth writing. If you want to say right now that I will finish my MBA in IIM, I will finish my MBA in Harvard, I will do this in uh, B.Tech in IIT or M.Tech in IIT, whatever, choose your industry, choose your uh, life, choose your script, choose your education. I will do this. That is the first choice that you make which leads to a decision. The choice that you make today, however stupid it might look to many of you today. Can I make a choice? I all along thought it's not possible. I want to make a choice about my life today. I will write a script. Once I write a script, what do you do? Normally as they say, work backwards. Write what the script should look. If you want to write, like uh, many of the movies now come with what is called the franchise model. Write your name, say that, hyphen 1, hyphen 2, hyphen 3, hyphen 4, hyphen 5. These are your sequels. Write your first sequel for next two years or next one year, next three years. My name, hyphen 1. This is the movie, this will be the climax, this is what I see becoming myself as. And once the climax is fixed, I interact with a lot of story writers. They first decide what the end has to be and then go backwards to find how the end has to be reached. When you go to any gaming place, you will find there is a game of maze that you play. Either you can enter through the entry, to come out through the exit, there are hundreds of ways. You can get stuck in between, you can get into a dead end, you may not even be able to find your way out. But the best way to play the game of maze is why you come from exit. From the exit, if you get in to the entry, there is only one way. Decide what is your exit point for your version 1, your version 2. Version 2 can be your age between 22 to 25. Version 3 can be your age between 25 to 30. Version 4 can be your age between 30 to 40, 40 to 60, right? 5, 6 scripts. After the exams are over, I'm sure your exams should be coming up now. Take your time, write a script. This is how my script will be. To achieve this, this is how my life unfolds. These are the choices I will make. These are the decisions I will make. And then put these scripts into your mind and make it as your one single compelling thought throughout your time. It's not worth wasting time in neutral thoughts. All of you will understand. 40,000 thoughts are anyway not being used. Observing, looking here, looking there. 
it's it's a simple neutral thought those neutral thoughts re invest them into rewriting your script firm up as they say for history you know i will firm up what my destiny will be i take it up i put it there and then i will allow my subconscious to mull over it over a period of time subconscious is not something that works overnight if you ask any farmer he will tell you that the rice that comes out has a process of about 90 days of actual work and prior to that he has to prepare the field all along your mind has been full of soil which has been mixed with wrong fertilizers chemicals which does not allow good crops to grow you have to allow that deweeding process of your soil once that happens which might take you another 15 days 30 days depends upon how well you go back and practice whatever we share later it will find a way to create a mental field which is now ready fertile to hold my future script in my hands when i see the script in my hand i have to start believing this is a request i would make to each students and if possible if this recording is made available i would maybe request the college uh, management team to make this available to all the students later when they watch this if the parents watch please allow your wards your students your sons and daughters to write their own scripts just back them give them the support just give it to them let them allow what will happen max you will call it failure i will call it experience they will come back and tell you that i found one way of not doing the greatest of successful people in the world have not done academically necessarily great whether it's the case of albert einstein whether it's the case of uh, ramanujam whether it's the case of bill gates if you take any big uh, successful people even in the field of spirituality very rarely you will find people who are both academically brilliant and they also have success beyond measure there are few few examples which exist but many of us resonate with this example that i am not a great academician i am i am not born to read great but i am all right to manage my own self by rewriting my scripts so the choice that you make is something that will lead to certain consequences in your life and take them as experiences do not worry about uh, no 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 i wrote this and within first week something happened and i am not able to digest what happened to me i don't want to buy this uh, consequence so let me go back to the earlier pattern of depending upon my society and my parents uh, one more uh, gem would have been lost to the world i wouldn't want that to be done so ensure that you learn from the consequences that you go through and find if you really look at uh, some of the great minds that the society has seen whether it's albert einstein or edison or newton Howard did a study about uh, five to ten years ago, and that study had been going on for about ten, fifteen years. What is it that differentiates these great people and the normal human beings, as we are called? What is the difference? How are we different from them? One thing they found out that when we were born, we were all given the same hardware, the brain. After ten, fifteen years of research, they just came out with. two simple revelations in my view they are really revelations those two simple revelations are simple first these grades allow their consciousness or knowledge field to continuously expand apparently sounds very easy the first was the finding in the second step they give a solution as to how they did what they did the second step which is very important for us which will also be there in my action plan which i'll share with you later these people persisted with asking questions then we were children i even today watch lot of children in the apartment i live there are a lot of tiny tots 6 months 1 year 2 year 3 years when i see them playing in the evening the one thing that they continuously do without giving up without any letter they ask questions they ask the servant maid they ask the parent they ask the mother they ask the father why is this why is this why they do not give up because at that age you do not have the concept of fear you don't have the concept of working in comfort zones you keep asking questions each one of you have gone through that 
between the age of 3 and 5 when we start developing the concept of I, the identity, we start asking questions and then we are told by our school teachers or by our parents or by our neighbors, shut up, do as you say. Haven't all of you gone through this in your younger lives? I have gone through it hundreds of times, thousands of times. I can see many teachers here, professors nodding their head. Because someone told us to shut up, don't ask questions. First time we didn't listen, second time we didn't listen, third time we didn't listen. After 30, 40, 50 beatings verbally, later it literally became, they started spanking us to tell us to shut up because they didn't know the answer. And hence, what are the biggest advantage all of you have asking questions? You lost it at a very young, tender age. And it was very convenient for the educational system so that they can dump you with whatever they want. Between the first standard to 12, to your plus 2 to college, to your doctorate or MPhils, you are told this is the curriculum, read it. Get these marks, you pass. That's all. Creativity and ability to ask questions have been killed. And this is what made these geniuses possible. And even today, it's possible, which is hidden in front of each and every one of you. Why am I asking you to ask questions? Because without asking questions, you will not know the choices. Without knowing the choices, you will not be able to discriminate to make the choices. Without your ability to make choices and discriminate, you will not be able to unfold the script that you want to write. Hence, the need to ask question is something which is already there. Each one of us has. So today asking question, you don't need to ask parents. All of us have access to internet. Those days, we didn't know where to ask, so we asked our parents. Today, for everything, we can go and ask questions and there are thousands and thousands free and paid resources available which tells you exactly to achieve what you want to achieve. The only difference these people had is their ability to raise their level of questions. They did not ask simple questions. Why is this pain here? Why are you giving me coffee? They are not valid or they are not really useful questions. Ask questions to make yourself to spin in such a way that you can start thinking differently. How am I going to become better from today is one question you can ask. How can I ensure that I become a role model in this college? When I go out, people should give me a standing ovation saying that this person made a huge impact as a student. It's not very difficult. It's why to ask this question and then go and find the answer and make that answer as your script and let the script, based on the destiny that you want to have, let the script unfold to meet the destiny to say, this is what I want to achieve and hence I have decided to write this script and hence I have decided to make these choices. To make these choices, I have started to ask these questions. This questioning power is hidden in each and every one of you. Unfortunately, because of our schooling system, because of our way in which our society operates, the whole thing has been curtailed where we have been stopped from really looking within. Asking questions outside is much more easier. Asking questions to yourself. Why am I like this? Why can't I become better? Instead of asking the world, why are you like this? Why don't you change? Ask yourself, how do I change my destiny? How do I work upon myself to make the right choices? How do I ensure that I write the right script so that I use the script and walk towards the destination that I want to choose? I don't want somebody else to choose my destiny. In my life, it took me a lot of time for me to realize this because we didn't have external teachers in this field for us to teach. For you at least, there is somebody who has shared certain thoughts with you today for you to know that it is possible for you to make choices. It is possible for you to ask questions. It is possible for you to actually go and allow those choices to unfold provided you have written your script and put them in your subconscious mind. Go and look up the mind, how to program your subconscious mind. You will find a lot of answers because this is not the forum where I want to share all those things because it's, it's quite easy. There are enough YouTube and learning videos right from Khan Academy to so many videos which are available for you free. I have uploaded my own videos, uh, hundreds of them on programming subconscious. Go and search for them, it's all available. How to program your subconscious mind, how to visualize, how to create the self-talk that is essential. You don't need to tell anyone I am doing this. Don't tell the world I am going to change myself. Let the process be inside of you. Let the world see the finished product. When I change myself, I don't need to go and tell the world that I am changing myself. But the world will see a changed product. This is something that I learned over a period of time. I would have been happier if someone had taught me at the age of 10 or 15. Because I would have made more intelligent or considered choices and allowed me 
the wisdom of deciding where my fate would be. Let me come back and connect the dots here. How do I ensure that my mind remains unclouded? How do I ensure that I remain connected to positive thinking? This is exactly where we bring in the method of meditation that you all went through. When we meditate, our mind automatically calms down. Our mind now is ready to become a field for instilling better thoughts. To support the mind, we also ensure that the mind is hooked to the heart and the heart which will be able to guide you with the right directions, feeling based directions which will lead you to the right way, gets slowly transformed inside. It's like a positive virus that you are putting inside yourself. By connecting to the source, to the divinity or to the nature or to whatever you want to call through the process of meditation. I am very happy that all of you sat well and received what was given in those 15 minutes. It will unfold in its own way, provided you also allow that to unfold. When I meditate, my mind and my heart, which are the two fields of my future, which is where my choices are made, which is where I get the guidance from within, my heart and mind gets connected to an infinite source, you want to call it subconscious, you want to call it superconscious, you want to call it supraconscious, you want to call it God, it's your choice. Once it gets connected, it starts giving me wisdom beyond my ability to get on my own. It tells me exactly where I have to go. When I make a wrong choice, it tells me pause. One of the biggest things I have learned meditating, I have been meditating as they taught since 1992. One thing I have learned in my life is through the process of meditation, I have learned how to pause, how to reflect, how to learn from what is being told instead of reacting. This has to a great extent, I can't say I have mastered it 100%, but to a great extent it has given me a choice of making considered choices instead of jumping into something because someone told me, because I got emotional over it. The process of meditation has helped me to develop better thinking, higher levels of thinking, connecting through the process of prayer to a higher level of source where I can start getting that wisdom. Many of the greatest discoveries in the world have happened literally overnight when the person went to the bed with a prayer. And the next day morning, the answer appeared. And then they went and did it, they found. You can read any scientific journals, you will find this. Something happened which the scientists cannot explain, they cannot fathom, they will not be able to come to you and say, this is what happened. They found out that something triggered and I found the answer. That Eureka moment. This is what prayer can actually bring you. And the process of cleaning or rejuvenation you would have been taught. This is where the mental sediments which are unnecessary. See, predominantly as I told you, negative thoughts are nothing but fear, lack of belief in yourself and in your surroundings. When you start developing the habit of daily cleaning, we spend about 22 and a half hours to 23 hours for ourselves in the world, including sleeping time. Take about an hour's time roughly to invest in yourself and see what happens when you start meditating and cleaning. When the cleaning happens continuously, the sediments are removed. The river can only flow when the river bed is present. The river will have to find a new direction if the riverbed is either changed or the riverbed is cleaned or it is deepened or it is even the river has to flow through the same way, the water will become pewter because the sediments are completely removed from the base of the river. What we call as the samskaras, also which form the tendencies. If you are able to do this consistently, parallelly when you meditate, your mind becomes a sharper instrument. One look you don't look, you start seeing. We all look. We, many of us do not know how to see. When we start seeing, we see things as they should be. And it tells me, as I see over a period of time, I'll be able to say that, okay, the choice available in front of me is not correct. My heart doesn't say, my mind does not tell me that this is the right choice I'm making. The heart and mind working together allows me, even when my heart and mind do not work together well, in my view, I can take a pause, pray, 
and wait for guidance. We don't know exactly what would happen, but something will unfold. If you really look at it, till now we have looked at what makes destiny, the building blocks of destiny. We have looked at the definitions of design and destiny and how we actually can, by making the right choices and regulating my mind and cleansing continuously, make my mind pure and heart so stable that I can, one look, allow the future to be seen. This is what we call in parlance as seers, people who can see the past, present and future. One look they are able to see what is going to happen. One look they are able to see what has happened in the past. Through the process of meditation, cleaning and prayer is something that we will be able to do. Let me now come down to the practicality. I am going to share you a few points, action points. I would be happy to take notes. Anyway, the video will be available, I guess. I am going to give you a 10 point action plan as to what you can do to go back and start working on designing your destiny from this moment. A brief summary is already something I shared in the talk. I am going to give you an action point. Point number one. Meditate. I already shared how it's going to help. So point number one is meditate. As many times as you want. Whenever you are in problem, whenever you face a choice in front of you, meditate for guidance from within. Allow that inner force to come back and help you. Point number two, action plan number two. Rejuvenate or clean as we call it. Rejuvenate or clean on a daily basis. We even have something called as a spot rejuvenation or spot cleaning. Whenever I feel disturbed, I can quickly clear myself off so that the disturbance does not affect the choices that I am going to make. Just two seconds. For example, if Dasrata had only told Kaikeyi before committing emotionally, give me one day's time and come back to you. Ramayana might have happened differently. All it, because he got emotional, at that point of time she pushed. She was forcing him to make a choice. She made a choice saying, she made him to make a choice that these are the two boons I am going to give you. Had Dasrata only told her, I am going to meditate, I am going to you know, sort of clean, let me, give me about 15 minutes time. He would have maybe cleaned and then he would have said, this is a decision I can't take because I am only a king. There is a ministers, a council of ministers who are available. I need to put it to them. I go back, discuss and come back. It would have got some time for him so that Ramayana might have taken a different turn altogether. Point number three, connect and learn to pray. Whenever you are in doubt, whenever your meditation and cleaning does not help you, pray to some source which is beyond us to give you the right guidance and wait. Don't expect knock knock and somebody to open the door immediately. Sometimes it may take you one hour, sometimes it may take a day, sometimes it may take a little bit longer time. It's perfectly fine. Point number three, set goals, develop plans and focus on your priorities. Set goals, develop your plans and focus on your priorities. The plan is the script, the goal is the destination. The priorities are your day-to-day -day work that you do which are aligned to your plan and goal. Point number five, keep visualizing and develop a positive self-talk. This is something that is essential for you to program your subconscious mind. Point number six, keep asking questions. Don't give up, even if you are beaten up hundred times. Keep asking questions. Ask questions not questions of lower order, but ask questions of higher order, which will make me better, which will make the world better, which will make everyone around me better. Point number seven, never settle for mediocrity. Mediocrity meaning so-so. If I can score 100, why should I settle for 35? When I give my efforts, it is passion. When people start putting on the outcome, it becomes pressure. Don't worry about outcome. Focus on the process. Do not settle for mediocrity. Point number eight, generate law of attraction by giving. Start giving to the world what you know. Start giving to the world. Start doing to the world what you are good at. If you are a good music student, go and teach somebody else music. If you are good at volunteering, go and do volunteer work somewhere. The world has a way of bringing back what you give and give it back to you in multitudes. Point number nine, in spite of what happens, Point number nine says, live a life of cheerful acceptance and minimum regrets. Whatever happens, I have done my best, something happens, it's perfectly fine. 
I know regrets in life. Whatever has happened has happened for good, as Gita says. Point number 10. Work, work and work. I am going to read out a short, a three paragraph stuff on work and then I will close my talk with that. Work is man's greatest function. He is nothing. He can do nothing. He can achieve nothing. He can fulfill nothing without working. If you are poor, work. If you are rich, continue working. If you are burdened with seemingly unfair responsibilities, work. If you are happy, keep right on working. Idleness gives room for doubt and fears. If disappointments come, work. If your health is threatened, work. When faith falters, work. When dreams are shattered and hope seems dead, work. Work as if your life were in peril. It really is. No matter what ails you, work. Work faithfully. Work with faith. Work is the greatest remedy available for mental, physical and all afflictions. In this occasion where we are assembled together, let's learn to work and make our destiny design in my hands and designing destiny becomes a possible. I wish all the students a great future to ensure that you start writing your own scripts, follow your own heart, make your own plans and ensure that when we meet you next, you'll come back and say, we wrote a script, we have fulfilled it. Thank you.